car dealers are just such hysterically effective ambush predators. We've all been there. They've got tricks and traps and convoluted this and that and all means of coercing you across the line and just milking you for even more money while you're, you know, down there on the mat. Perhaps we should talk about exactly that. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap. Australia only. Obviously, and if you'd like to avail yourself of that and take yourself off the table for these ambushes, then uh, website, card, kind of thing. However, if you do want to DIY it, perhaps we should get this question out of the way from somebody just like you, only named Rodney McLennan, who says... What is the deal with the waiver form that dealers demand you sign if you refuse paint protection? What is the legality around this practice? That's from Rod, okay? So I think a lot of people are just blindsided by this kind of stuff at dealerships. And you have to remember that dealers are ambush predators, right? And you're in their territory standing on their X, which is exactly where you don't want to be in an ambush, okay? So you just have to remind yourself about whose terrain you're standing on and what they're trying to do. And the fact that even though this can be so polite and seemingly amicable, it really is an adversarial kind of negotiation. And in the modern world, we're not all that used to that, some of us. And you have to just, you know, look up on the clock and Make sure that you're aware that that clock up there on the wall, on the showroom, is at bullshit o'clock. So the thing about bullshit is it could be true or it could be false. It could be any combination of truth or falsehood. But the objective of bullshit is to further the objective of the bullshitter. Okay, so whatever the bullshitter wants to achieve, he can use any combination of truth or falsehood to get you across the line and achieve his objective, which in this case is to milk you of even more cash. All right. So everything you get told at a dealership, like there's another couple coming in to look at this car at lunchtime, but if I take your deposit now, we can get them off the table and all of that sort of stuff, like it could be true. But it's really just there so that they can extract your cash, all right? And this is exactly that, right? Because think about a modern car, right? How long have cars been painted? It has to be for like 100 years. And paint technology has improved and improved and improved. And modern paint has this sort of rock-hard clear coat over the colour. And it frankly doesn't need protecting, right? It just doesn't. Now... The cell about paint protection, fabric protection, all this stuff is the new baby fear cell, right? So if you're breeding and having a new baby, then you don't want to put your new baby in a second-rate baby capsule, right? And you don't want to put your new baby in a used cot or anything of that because you want the best for the new baby. (laughs) A new car is sold to you in many ways in exactly this way. Like, you've got to do the best for the new baby. Like, forget it, in six weeks' time, it's just going to be a car, right? And let's face it, if it's a mainstream car like a CX-5 or a Mazda 3 or an i30 or a Tucson, it's it's going to be brand new for a little while and it's just going to evolve, devolve, into a shit box, right? It's going to be your shit box and you might take care of it, but it's not going to be a collector's item It's not going to be something that you mothball and sell for $400,000 in 2050 before you retire kind of thing, okay? It's just not. Paint protection is exactly this kind of sell. The dealer does not care whether you protect the paint on your car or not, right? The dealer wants the money. Like, he's going to get the paint protection dude to come in, and then he's going to pay the paint protection dude, and whatever he pays the paint protection dude to protect your paint, he's going to add his customary billion percent markup and charge you. And that's what he wants. He doesn't care if this is, you know, a benefit to you or it's completely useless. And I'd suggest, particularly with paint protection, you've got to read the warranty document that comes with the paint protection. So they they often say, you know, 10 years or whatever worth of 
guarantee. Read the fine print, dude, because it is almost impossible to comply with the requirements in that contract to get that protection for that length of time. There's the annual inspections and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Who's got time? Who does that? Is it even necessary? No. So the thing about the waiver that they get you to sign if you decline, there's all this theatre. You're standing on the X, right? It's an ambush. It's just like getting ambushed by the boss because you get dragged into his office without warning. You stand on his X in his terrain at a time of his choosing and you cop it. That's just like getting ambushed in an underground car park in a deleted scene from some Hollywood movie, right? Because the attacker has already scoped it out. He's just waiting for you to stand on the X. So you're there and if you're reluctant to go for the paint protection and you say, dude, I'm already at my limit. I don't want the paint protection. There's this theatre. It's like, you don't want the paint protection for the new baby? We better ring the Department of Community Services or at least get you to sign this document that explains to everyone in the future that you said no when we told you what a fucking great idea this was, right? The fact is, you don't have to sign anything. I just tell them to go to buggery, right? It's it's that symbol. This is what you've got to do in an ambush is like in a physical ambush, get off the X, create some distance, angle, whatever, move in a way that your attacker is not uh, set up for. You know, the plan doesn't include you getting off the X and counterattacking or something. And, you know, you've got to You've just got to say no to this kind of stuff because some documents, yeah, you've got to sign them. You've got to sign a document uh, to agree to purchase a car, like a contract, okay? That's fair enough. And there are there are a few documents that you really do have to sign for this and that in various commercial whatevers. But this business about being led around by the nose, like, like <laughs> come over here, sit down, sign this, blah, blah, blah. It's a process, right? It's an endurance event. And the reality is that the form is meaningless. I just refuse to sign it. It's just a coercive practice that sort of pumps up the perceived gravity of your refusal to agree to this fantastic pain protection. Now, Australian consumer law says that all products that you buy, essentially, have to be reasonably durable. And this includes the paint on a modern car. Manufacturers, read the friggin' brochure, dude. Manufacturers don't go, oh, look, the paint, yeah, it's pretty shit. You'll have to protect it with some aftermarket solution. That's not in the brochure because the paint's not pretty shit, okay? The paint is reasonably durable. The paint protection is not needed. And... It's just a coercive practice designed to hoover out your money. And this waiver really is just there so that they can get you to have another look at the gravity of your refusal and maybe think again. So I just say no to all of that crap. You know, paint protection, fabric protection. Just don't spray acid all over the car every evening and you'll be okay. You know, don't store chooks or cats in the car overnight. You probably won't need the fabric protection. And uh, rust protection is another one that they sell, pro tip, for at least the past 25 years, modern cars have been galvanised, okay? They don't rust. They shouldn't rust anyway. Okay, rust is more of a 70s and 80s thing. When I was growing up, all of my shitbox cars when I was poor and young, uh, they all rusted, okay? But not so much anymore. You don't see too many cars succumbing to rust in Australia. You might in Canada or, you know, parts of North America where they salt the roads because it's so friggin' cold in winter. But rust is a non-thing as well. So, you know, most of these aftermarket things are really just there to pump up the dealership's profits and you will not compromise your vehicle in any way by just saying no to all of that shit. And this just amounts to you getting off the X and exerting some control. And control is the key point, right? Because you really have a lot of power when you buy a car because you've got the cash golden rules, right? You've got the gold, you can make the rules. And that's why the dealership tries to lead you down this particular track, all dotted with various, you know, ambush X's along the way. They want to take 
your perception of your position, i.e., that you actually have a lot of power, but you might not think that because you're in unfamiliar territory being led down this path by an adversary, okay? They want to uh, disempower you so that they can milk you for all your worth. And it really is incumbent on you to protect your own financial interests by just digging deep and getting off the X and saying, no, dude, we're not doing that. 